doing my fellowship for uh, under Chris Dashkovich, I was there's a department at Texas Children's that's called Business Process Transformation Group. Uh, they are really the black belts or those that lead the more larger initiatives uh, at the hospital level or some of the bigger departmental level um, projects. Um, and so doing my fellowship, uh, I was afforded the opportunity to actually um, work with the Business Process Transformation Group as well. And it happened to be at the time that they had a new director, they had plenty of new staff, um, and really four of the staff members there um, all had a consulting background, but I weren't really formally trained as black belts in Lean Six Sigma. So he um, decided that he was going to put those um, four staff members through um, black belt training as well. And in addition, he opened it up to three more individuals or staff members at TCH, and I happened to be one of the lucky ones that was chosen um, to be trained. With that said, I will be honest and upfront, um, it is not a big part of my job today. Um, and the aspect that, yes, some of these tools, some of the philosophy and some of the theory, um, we all utilize in some form or fashion, be it on paper, in a formal way, or more of an informal way of just thinking and how we go about doing things. Um, but, I will say I did work on a number of projects, um, basically in the year to two years that I was somewhat involved. Uh, I worked on projects with um, our pediatric radiology department on looking at how to increase the utilization of the MRIs. Um, there was a sticking point where uh, there was a perspective out there that we had a long delay for MRIs. <laughs> some of it true, not some of, some of it not so true. Um, we didn't have a long delay in MRIs when it came particularly to non-sedated patients. We had an extremely long delay when it came to sedated patients. Part of the issue, though, is we're one of few hospitals that goes about sedating patients to do the MRIs for a pediatric population. So all of the MRI box locations throughout the community don't sedate patients and typically don't even try and do pediatric patients. They're more for adult patients. So there's a unique opportunity there on looking at how they utilize the MRIs. They had a MRI that was newer and so it had more uh, higher definition when it came to MRI, but they only really utilized it for research. So it was trying to get them to look at things differently. Uh, smaller projects that I worked on, I looked at first time starts when it came to uh, OR utilization from a gynecology perspective, uh, since at the time Chris Daskovich was uh, just starting in her role with Women's Services. Uh, I was involved with two different Kaizen events. A uh, much larger Kaizen event was the ER Kaizen event, where we looked at how patients came into through the emergency department, how they were triaged, how they were treated, how they were discharged, either home or discharged to the floor, or discharged to observation. So. Um, it was a project that took a lot of lead time up to, so it took about two months of work, two to three months of work to actually get to the Kaizen. Um, I've also worked on two other Kaizons that were less lead time. It was more of get in and do something because um, it was more at the clinic level. Um, I facilitated uh, Kaizen and the OBGYN practice for Baylor um, as I was mentoring a green belt at that time. Um, and then I also participated in a Kaizen event when it, I happened to be in more of an operations role uh, more recently um, in a clinic area. Um, so I have worked on projects. It's not that I haven't, but I will say it's probably been um, it's probably been about a year and a half or so been, that I've worked on a formalized project. I have mentored, I did mentor three green belts um, for them to get their green belt certification as well. Um, so. What are we here today for? So what is Lean Six Sigma? Um, so we'll talk a little bit about evolution of quality, uh, probably get more interaction with y'all from there, and then really go through and describe what Lean is and what Six Sigma is, because it's really completely two different approaches. You don't always have to utilize both of them at the same time. For a lot of bigger projects, they definitely do um, enhance. Uh, a little bit about descriptive statistics. Obviously, y'all have that here, so it kind of will just be a brief summary over it. Uh, and kind of look at how we do utilize some of that really more around the, the 
the Six Sigma part, and then leadership. Uh, how can this be different? Um, so I'll touch a little bit based on my experience here uh, as a student and some of the classes that um, obviously I took um, and what can be applied uh, really in a day-to-day -day perspective. Because um, I will say um, class is great, um, but doesn't always necessarily translate over to to a day-to-day -day perspective, but there are a lot of things from a theory perspective that you will see when it comes to for formation of a team, um, and what value comes out of getting the right team together, being an influencer, because not every time as a leader or uh, uh, be it a formal or an informal leader, do you have control over much. Um, you really need to be able to influence because a lot of big projects you're working with multiple departments so you're touching a lot of variables and you don't have control over all those variables so you need to be more of an influencer than anything else and lastly change management so being a facilitator of change